Executive Thursday Show. Hello, viewers. You're welcome to this brief chat with me. Um, and uh, the title of our medita of our interaction is how to thrive as a professional. How do I become a professional success for the accountant, for the engineer, for the doctor, for the architect? How do I thrive as a professional? And uh, I just want to share a few thoughts with you on that matter. First of all, let me make it clear that uh, what, uh, what I mean, what do I mean by a professional? You know, if there is a, a job that needs to be done and somebody says, we are looking for a professional to do this job. What do you think he's talking about? He wants to get somebody who knows his onions, who has the knowledge, who has the skills, somebody who is an expert and a specialist in the job that needs to be done, and somebody who will come and serve the public interest. He subjects himself to a higher ethical code than you could, could otherwise swear for other, for other people at his level. So when we say this is the kind of person we want a professional, this is the kind of person we are looking for. Somebody who will come with considerable intellectual knowledge and skill. I usually say that there are three uh, uh, major tests we give for the professional. Is he competent? Is he disciplined? Does he have integrity? Three things that will help us to make, uh, 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 make up our mind on the quality of the professional. I call them the triple test. Where we find a, a professional who has all the knowledge and skill, that's the competence, who has the discipline to do what he needs to do when he needs to do it, and who has the integrity to stand above pettiness and um, grab mentality, entitlement mentality and all the things that are rife in our society when we meet such a person with those characteristics then we are ready for a revolution you see the thing about uh, professionalism is that when we become professionals it affects what we are doing in a positive manner and i just want to share some thoughts on how we can grow on into professional greatness number one Whatever you are doing, define your purpose in life and career. Don't just change because you see an opportunity, you know, you're an opportunist. And so an opportunity has come by to so jump on one bag of bandwagon, you jump on No. You are where you are because you have made a conscious decision to run on a particular lane. So the first thing I'm emphasizing is define your purpose in life and career. What is the niche you were created to occupy? Somebody said that our purpose in life is the thing that God created us to be to succeed at. There is something you will do and you become front page news. There is a purpose you will bring to life and men will celebrate you. And until that thing is in your life, you don't begin to live. It will affect your, your level of interest. How passionate you are about a job or a task. It will define your threshold of pain. How much pain will you endure in order to be able to achieve what you want to achieve in that area of resources? You are ready to deploy your resources in the direction of satisfying that goal. What is your purpose? There's also your duty and devotion. You are putting everything into uh, this task that you are doing. Let me put it this way. Your purpose is the explanation for the talents that God has given you. God gave you certain talents so that you'll be able to do certain things. You were created to succeed at something. There is something about you that if it is brought to bear at the place of work, you'll be a front, you know, headline, a headliner. So the second thing is strive to rise to the top of knowledge pyramid. You see, knowledge, knowledge is a pyramid. You start with data, you go to information, 
Then you go to, uh, 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 before you go to uh, knowledge and you go to wisdom. Wisdom is the highest level where you now apply knowledge, insight on, uh, and foresight. They're all combined in wisdom. You must rise steadily if you're going to be a successful professional. I actually said that there are six levels or six types of knowledge that we crave and desire in order to you know, go up the knowledge pyramid. You need the know, the know how. Know how talks about the skills for performing the work. You see, we are know, know what talks about knowledge. Know how talks about the skill in applying that knowledge. There is know who, which is a type of social bonding. Whom do you know? What uh, networks have you built? What links have you set up between you and individuals? There is the know why, where you bring your interpretative skills to, uh, to play in whatever you're doing in life. There is no when, a sense of timing. We say that if something stays over time, if a baby is born before his time is premature, if it is born too late after it was supposed to come out, it becomes a stillborn. Timing is of the essence. And the final one is nowhere. Situational ethics. Knowing the logic of where and when to do what you need to do. We need to grow it. We need to have a good knowledge of it. Know where you are. Know the circumstances under which you want to operate. That is a third, issue, a third level. Develop a keen sense of judgment. You see, being a professional means that you will face a lot of challenges without any rule books telling you how to do it. You don't have any clear prescription of how to do this job. It just comes up. You must be able to think outside the box. You must be able to think while, you know, on your feet. That's what you need, a keen sense of judgment. You need to be able to appraise situations and give a clear-cut uh, decision. Let me quickly run through. You must be able to make, create, and innovate. Never be satisfied with old answers. Never be satisfied with the status quo. You see, when people remain in their comfort zones, they don't want to break new grounds. They don't want to take steps out of the uh, comfortable uh, arena. But unless you do that, you will not break into new uh, territories. You need all to know how that, uh, to know that things that, uh, but somebody put it this way. He said, uh, when, when I don't usually, it's not always that I just ask, uh, um, why are things happening the way they are happening? Somebody says, I look at things that are happening, I say, why are they happening this way? Another person comes and says, I look at the way things are happening, and I say, why not this way? When we just remain with that which is comfortable, probing the ordinary, we will not break new grounds. If we must be truly great as professionals, we must make, create, and innovate. We must have strong social networks. The Japanese call it personalism. It's a trust bonding, building your personal capital. Where have you worked? Whom do you know? What systems have you been identified with? These are the things that make for strong social networks. Then be mentored and mentor others. Allow yourself to be mentored. Somebody said that all of us in life, we need three kinds of persons. We need a Paul who is above us, mentoring, defining a, a path that we need to take. We need a Barnabas, someone who operates at your level, your peer, your equal, your colleague. You know, the one who can tell you your fault without blinking and a minute. But beyond just the Paul, the Barnabas, you also need a Timothy. A Timothy is a younger person, a lower person in, this, in, the, in, the, in the order. Someone, a young man, you look at and you say, there goes I, but for time and experience. There are things you wanted to be and wanted to do, which you never was able to do. Now you see this individual, you want to build these qualities into him. So every man needs a Paul, a Barnabas, and a Timothy. Paul is, is like a, a, a mentor. Pierre, uh, Barnabas is a peer. And uh, Timothy is a mentee. We are called to do this. this another, again, the, the, it describes a, 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 a pattern of management that is often called paternalism. But let's go on. Remember, if you want to be great as a professional, that life is an unfinished business. 
there's no way you can arrive. No matter how successful you are, there's still always an opportunity for improvement. We keep rising. We keep going. We are here today. Tomorrow we go further. And on, if you are satisfied with where you are today, you can never be truly a great professional. You must always be striving for even better. Then there is also the issue of perseverance. Remember, talent gives you hope of success. Only perseverance will guarantee it. Perseverance means you do not give up because you are, you know, you are destined to be great. You are, you don't give up because you, you will insist until you get there. You are determined to get there. Persevere. And then finally, practice the habits of highly effective people. Remember that thoughts become words. Words would eventually become actions. Actions will graduate into habits. Habits will become character. Character will become destiny. And destiny will define your eternity. Watch your habits. Behave in a way that is, you know, that, that is a, you know, typical of professionals. Let me summarize with a very brief story. It's about a, 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 a couple, uh, an American couple. They had this pet in their home. And the pet was named Sally. Very cute little thing with black and golden streaks. And the children played with Sally. The day they brought the Sally home, it was only about a foot long. One foot. Very beautiful thing to watch and play around, coil around the children. But gradually, Sally began to grow and grow and grow until it became 11 feet in length and weighed over 80 pounds. Sally, the pet of the children, was a Burmese python. You see, Habits are like that. When they start, they are cute. They are elegant. They are stylish. But they grow and grow and grow until they become predators. One day, this uh, American family, no, nobody knew what happened. But the python turned on the son of the family, a 15-year-old son, Derek, and caught this young boy, strangled him to death, suffocated him. It's a, a true story. By the time some, a neighbor called the police and the police arrived, the boy was dead. And the python was hissing and looking for who to devour. Our habits will eventually spell doom or spell glory. Let's beware of what we do. Finally, finally, have a proper work balance. There are five factors we must always be very wary of. Our work, our family, our health, our friends, that's our relationships and our spiritual life. All these five components, we need to juggle them in a manner to remain effective. We can't ignore any of them. You know the funny thing about those five? Your work, if it falls, is like a, a ball. If it bounces, it, 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 it springs up. It falls, it gets up. It falls, it gets up. That's work. But all the others, if they fall, there's no getting up. Family, health, friends, spiritual life manage them carefully and my prayer is that as we put in the best we will grow and work strong thank you for being with us we'll come again